Hi, this is Sarah Levin, the Artful Inker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I've got three art gallery cards with gilded leafing to share with you. Let's get started. For our simple stamping card, I'm going to use the art gallery stamp set and one of the basic white note cards and envelopes. They come as a pack in the annual catalog. And to me, these are perfect for simple stamping, beginner stamping, not that you can't do layers and more complicated things on here. So I've got my stamps for the flower here. And we're going to start with So Saffron and the center stamp. And let me stamp off. My So Saffron is very inky. So let's pull this down here. And close this one up and move it out of the way. And then next, I've got my Petal Pink. And for that, we're going to use the full list of the large flowers. Okay. And we're going to see this little middle piece here. We're going to line that up right here on the middle of our So Saffron piece. And you get just a little bit of that yellow tone coming through. And then I've got the Flirty Flamingo. And this is the top layer of the flower. And line up that same center section here and give that a rub all over so all of those bits transfer. And close this one up and let me pull my one flower off and grab the leaves from the pack. And there we go. And then I want the Hair Pizzazz ink pad. And we're going to ink up those leaves. And then let me grab a piece of scrap paper here. I want to stamp off a second because my Pear Pizzazz is very inky. And then we're going to add the leaves in here. Make sure I'm reaching all the way out to the ends. Okay, so let's pick these up. And now we're going to add our gilded leafing. So one technique for adding the gilded leafing is to use tear and tape. And we're just going to put a vertical line of tape over here on our card. And then I'm going to use my scissors to trim this, even though you can just tear it, because I want the ends to be very straight. So let's trim this off and make sure I take that bit of tape away. And let's put our paper snips away and grab my bone folder here real quick and just give this a quick burnish and then the end of my take your pick tool and pull up the backing tape. And now we are ready for the gilded leafing. So I like to leave mine in the jar. You can pour yours into another container if you wish. And I'm just going to pull out a few of the, the flakes and get them started on here. Okay, that's more than is going to be needed, but that's okay. And then I've got one of my blending brushes, and I'm just going to start and it, give this a bit of a smooth down with this. Now, you can leave this with a rougher texture like this has. We obviously br brush off the extra bits. 
or hold on just a moment we can take a piece of a stamping sponge and then really burnish this and give it a, a really clean crisp line so that's what we're going to do with this one so that's one technique for added the adding the gilded leafing let me clean this up and we'll move on now to finish up this simple no layer card I'm going to bring my flirty flamingo back in and add the sentiment checking to make sure that I've got it right side up and I'm going right down here in the corner. Let's straighten this on the grid paper. Okay. And there you go. That's our card. And then, of course, we can also add a stripe of that gilded leafing to our envelope to zhuzh it up just a little bit and we're just making sure that it's mostly straight and grab my paper snips here again we want clean edges for this and let's see if there's any overhang here And this is just such a quick and easy treatment for our envelope. And let's pull that scrap paper back in and the flakes of gilded leafing. Okay. Oops. And here's my brush to get us started. Got a piece here that doesn't want to stick. There we go. Okay. And then we'll finish with a good burnish with. Oh, I've got a, a non sticky spot here. So we'll fix that in a moment. Let's just add a little bit of tear and tape on top of that. I'm going to come right in here, give this a little bit of burnish, and then we'll pick this off. Just trying to come in here where there wasn't any sticky before so that I'm not picking off any of the, the gilding. Okay. And then let's put a couple of these loose flake bits on here and rub that in and then give it a good burnish. And we are ready to roll then with our envelope. Okay, so that's technique one and our simple card using the art gallery stamp set. Let me clean up and we'll move on to number two. For this second card, we're going to use the Art Gallery Bundle, and that's the Art Gallery Stamp Set that we used in the first card, and then the Floral Gallery Dies. Now remember, when you purchase them as a bundle, you do receive a 10% discount on that purchase in my store for the bundle. And let's grab a piece of Whisper White and I want my Calypso Coral ink. And then I'm using the little bouquet stamp. Just giving it an all over rub to make sure it's picked up plenty of ink. And the same thing, going to give it an all over rub to make sure it puts down plenty of ink. Okay. 
So there's that piece. And let's go ahead and use the mini stamp and cut and emboss and cut this out. Grab my plates and put this piece in. And then we need the die that coordinates with it. Let me just pull that off the backing sheet here and pop it down. And then, of course, I'm going to use a piece of washi to hold it in place since I've already stamped. And give this a crank through. Okay, and there's our die cut piece. Let's move this out of the way. And then we're going to move on to our gilding techniques two and three. So for our gilding technique number two, I've got the stamped image that's been die cut, and I'm going to add multi-purpose glue over here to each of these I don't know whether they're berries or buds or what have you, but they're going to be gilded now. So we're going to let this dry. And of course, uh, if you've used multi-purpose glue, you know that it dries tacky. So as soon as that's dried, I'll be right back. So with that multi-purpose glue dried to where it's tacky, I'm going to take my gilding flakes, gilding leaves, and just put a little bit on there. Obviously, that's overkill. And I'm going to just give this a little bit of a rub with my brush here. And for this one, I want the less burnished so that it's got a little more texture to it than we did with the first technique. So let me clean this up and we'll move on. Next is technique number three and we're going to use swirly frames for that. This stamp set is in the annual catalog and I have a circle cut with the stitch shaped shapes dies. I have trouble saying that and we're just going to rub this all over with my embossing buddy and then I'm going to ink up the swirly frames stamp with Versamark and I want to make sure that I'm good and inky so I'm going over it several times and then let's pull this over and Then rub all the way around so that we transfer all of that wonderful detail from the swirly frame stamp onto our die cut circle. And then let's pull, peel that away. And I'm going to pull my piece of scrap paper back in here. It's getting a workout today. And pour on my heat and stick. And let's just, just like when you're using embossing powder, you want to handle it as little as possible. Oops, trying not to get my fingers in the stamped image. And then let's go ahead and pour this back in our bottle. And I'm just going to grab my scissors here and use them to hold my piece in place as I heat this. Normally I would pick it up and show you. Let's see if I can zoom in and you can see. I'm not sure since it's kind of white on white whether you'll be able to see but we're just going to heat 
until this melts. So I've preheated my gun a little bit, my heat tool, and just until it melts the heat and stick. Not as much as you would if you were heat embossing. If you heat it too far, the heat and stick ceases to be sticky. And that's why I'm using the low setting on my heat tool. I just want to pick this up and see now whether I've Just this little bit back here is still crystals. Okay. Okay. So let's put this aside now and bring my piece of scrap paper back in and Add the gilding leaves around on this. And oh, we've got just going to rub this around with my finger. Move this out of the way and then I'm going to take my sponge since this is fine detail and come back around with it to clean off the excess and it looks like I stamped off here didn't quite get on the circle and that's okay we've got this little bit of delicate gold around the edge let me clean this up and we'll move on to the next step. And for our sentiment, I'm going to use a strip of Whisper White or Basic White. And my sentiment in Coastal Cabana. And then let's line this up. And it doesn't have to be absolutely centered, but straight is helpful. Okay, let's put the ink out of the way and grab that mini stamp and cut and emboss again. And I've got one of the floral gallery dies here for the sentiments. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm straightening up anything that wasn't straight with in my stamping by placing the die here. Okay, and go ahead and run this through and we'll put our card together. So this card is going to have more of a clean look as our first card did. I've got a thick basic white base that's four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. And then a piece of basic white. And this is three and three quarters by five. And I want to add some of this sheer coastal cabana ribbon that's in the, oh, I think it's playful patterns. Uh, ribbon combo pack that's in the annual catalog. So I'm going to put down a couple of stripes of tear and tape. Okay, and let's give those a burnish. They're easier to pull off once they're burnished. Okay, one backing, and 
There's our second backing piece. And let's just pull the ribbon end across there. Or the tape, sorry. So I've got a little bit of a angled cut here and I'm going to have it sit off the side. And then let's go ahead and cut this. Oh, I thought I'd rolled that up. There we go. And then we need to angle cut this again so that these two ends that are both going to be over here together will match. Okay. And then let's put this out of the way. And let's grab this piece and our dimensionals. Okay. And we'll have a wide border on this card. Line up our base and then put our piece down. Checking your top and two sides. Okay, and then we have our piece here that had the swirly frames and the gilded leafing. So let's pop our dimensionals onto it, and one in the center for good measure. And I'm going to turn this little more blank side where I didn't get stamped well over here, and then let's add dimensionals behind our flowers. Okay, and I need to bring in my mini dimensionals. And we're going to add those back in here and on my leaf. Just turn this just a little bit and time to add our sentiment Oop. and I need to trim this so real quick here I'm just going to hold it up to the edge and grab my paper snips and cut it right between these two okay and, nope, it's got to be many dimensionals. So we're on a double stack out here on the end. And then we're a single stack here. And just a dot of, whoops, multi-purpose glue on this end because it's going to sit on a piece that's already been raised with a dimensional. Okay, and then let's embellish this just a bit. To keep the clean lines that we've got going here, I'm going to use the opal rounds. I don't know if you've seen these. They have a little bit of glittery in them. 
but not so much that they'll take away from this clean look that we've got going. So let's just pop a couple of these on here. I'm looking for ones that have less um, color in them. And let's find one more that's just very lightly colored and stick it down here. And there's our card number two using the art gallery stamp set and the gilded leafing. So let me clear up and we'll do a third card. And for this third card, we're also going to be using the art gallery bundle. And remember that's the art gallery stamp set and the floral gallery dies. I'm going to start with a piece of Whisper White and my Coastal Cabana ink pad. And these flowers that we used in the second card, just want to make sure they're good and inky. Give them a press all over, make sure they've transferred all of that ink. Okay, let's close this up and move my stamp out of the way. And I want to bring in the stamp and cut and emboss, the full size machine this time, because we're going to be doing a little bit of dry embossing. Okay, so there's this. And let's grab that coordinating die and a piece of washi tape to hold it in place. Just checking to make sure that all of my pieces are inside the die lines. Okay, we look good. So put down a little bit of washi. And then I have one of the layering circle dies. And we're going to cut both of our pieces here at the same time. Okay, so we have our flowers and we're going to set them out of the way. And I've got my circle here, and I want to use my painted texture 3D embossing folder with it. So let's take that out. For this technique, we're going to use the painted 3D embossing folder and just slide our die cut circle in and have to take out the adapter plate and bring in this gray embossing plate and then just roll this on through nice and smooth and easy okay let's take this out of the way and look at the great texture on this piece. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take my embossing buddy and rub it all over, and then bring in a piece of scrap paper, and I'm going to use my Versamark ink pad and just drag it across some of the raised portions on the embossing. There's not any absolutely right way to do this. Let's sprinkle on some of the heat and stick powder. Okay. And dump this right back in. Okay. and get the heat and stick out of the way, bring in my heat tool, 
and let's let it heat for just a moment and then we're just going to melt the embossing powder the heat and stick it's not embossing powder so just as it begins to change into its melted form And then let's bring this back in and sprinkle on some of the gilded leafing. And where's my brush here? We're just going to brush that into those places that we dragged the Versamark across. Okay, and I'm looking at this. So let's put this back in. And that's a marbling technique. Should you want more veining on here, you can simply drag your Versamark on again and add some more heat and stick and repeat the process. Let's set this aside and move on to the next piece. Next, we're going to use one of these great flowering vine dies and a piece of Whisper White basic white, oh my goodness, and we're going to add adhesive sheet to it. Now the sticky part of the adhesive sheet are the pieces that I'm pulling back. So they're the split pieces on the sheet, and I'm just making sure that I've got my white all the way onto the sheet and then we're going to rub that all over and then I want to take my snips and cut around this piece of adhesive sheet. Let's move that out of the way. And then the backing paper can come on off of that. And I'm going to cut with the die going down through the adhesive sheet because I want the sticky piece bit to be on the top. I've got my stamp and cut and emboss. And we're just going to run this right on through. A little snap, crackle, and pop is normal. Since we're cutting through the adhesive sheet as well as the cardstock, I'm going to run it through a second time just in case. It may not have needed that. Okay. Now, let me grab my Take your pick tool and use some of the ejection holes here, and we'll just push this right on out of the die. Okay, and then off camera, I'm going to go ahead and push all these little pieces out, and I'll be right back. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos using this die, you know that the pieces, when you cut with the stamp and cut and emboss, just pop right out uh, without needing the die tool. At least that has been my experience with it. Um, let me start this other part of the sheet here. Okay. 
and I've got two little pieces that wanted to stay and we don't want them. Let's slide this over. Okay, so this is now sticky on the top, which is perfect. It's just the way we want it. And we're going to bring out those gilded leafing flakes again and put them on here. Whew, we got some big leaves. That's okay. Let's put this back over here and grab that blending brush again. And I'm just going to start and push these down onto the sticky. otherwise known as adhesive. Now when you use the brush you get a kind of rougher look to your burnish which is kind of a fun look and you get a smoother burnish when you use the stamping sponge as I've shown you in one of the previous um, sections of this technique video. So I'm going to go in here and I can get in a little more detail with this. But you can see how the color changes in the burnish just a little bit. Okay, so now we have all of our detail or most of our detail showing here. Let's pick this up and check it one more time. And that's just a beautiful gilded piece now to work with. Let me set this aside, clean this up a little bit, and I'll be back again. Now for this last gilded leafing technique that we're going to use today, I'm going to take my multi-purpose glue and the um, spreader end instead of the uh, usual tip that I use and I'm just going to start and spread on enough here and then I'm going to take my I've got a sponge dauber that I dedicate to glue and I'm just going to come around and make a frame from my glue. And the reason I'm using the spreader end is because I put down more glue with it at one time. Let's make sure that I'm getting all the way out to the edge here. We don't want any blank spots. So I'm going to add just a little more down here and make sure that I've gotten all the way to the edge and all the way to the edge up here. I've got plenty of center here to put my hand down so I'm not getting all gluey. And then we're going to let this gl glue dry because uh, then it gets tacky, as you can tell right there from my dauber sticking to the glue. I just want to make sure that I've got it coming in far enough. Okay, so I'll be back in just a moment when that's had time to dry. Okay, so we have our piece of Whisper White and our multi-purpose glue is dry enough and we're going to sprinkle on some of the gilding flakes trying to get them kind of a little bit everywhere we can always move them around that might be enough to start i'm just going to place the cap on here lightly. 
they're so light and airy that I'm always afraid if I don't cap them that I will blow them around. Now again, I like the, the rough texture that you get using the blending brush for some of my gilding. And if you like a really smooth finish, then pull out your Stampin' Sponge. One gives more texture. And I love things that are easy texture. Okay, and then let's just pop this off. And then I'm just going to go around the edges and knock off these loose bits. And the same thing here in the center. I don't want to burnish all of this completely smooth. I love the uh, kind of shabby gold that's going on. I hope that shows up on the camera. Okay, so that's our final gilding technique. Okay, so let me set this aside for a moment and clean up, and I will be right back and we will finish our card. So now it's time to put our card together. I've got this piece of Whisper White that's three and three quarters by five and I'm going to lay down a single stripe of tear and tape. It would be great if I could do this straight so I'm going to flip this over to the other side and before I press it down I'm going to check and make sure that I've got it lined up with the same grid line so we're going to start on this grid line here and come across to the same grid line on the other side instead of dipping down. That'll be a much better look when we're done. Let's just cut that so that it's straight and bring in this Coastal Cabana, the sheer ribbon with the slubs in it um, that's part of the playing with patterns ribbon combo and burnish that with my bone folder and then let's just get that end up and we'll stick this down right on the tear and tape and I like tear and tape for ribbon liquid adhesive shows through and this means that I've got a nice flat uh, piece of ribbon. Okay, next, let's bring in our card base, which is basic white, and it's four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. And then this piece that we created that's going to be a kind of a gold frame layer with all of this wonderful texture. And we just have a little bit of border of the white all the way around. So we'll make sure we've got this well adhered. I don't want to run my bone folder down it because it will change the texture of the gold leafing. So I just need to take a minute and hold this. Okay, next we're going to add this layer and add dimensionals behind it. Pull all those backing pieces off. Okay. 
Okay, and slide this back and line it up in the, the grid. And make sure that we've got an even frame around. And then I've got this filigree piece that we cut with the flowering vine die. And I'm just going to add glue here in the center of it. And let's center this piece. And hold the, this middle piece where we had our glue down. I do like to have the outside edges loose. And then next is this piece with the painted 3D embossing and then the marbling. Oops, let's pull that back here. Okay, Oop. yeah, one more. Okay. And center this over our, our die cut, die cut that is, not die. And then let's grab a couple of mini dimensionals. And add in our little floral here. And this is our final card with the art gallery bundle and the gilded leafing. Thank you for stopping by today. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you, and click the bell if you'd like to be notified the next time I upload a video. And if you're in the United States, please do some of your Stampin' Up! shopping in my store and you can find a link to that in the description below. Have a great day. Bye.